Good morning. I hope you are enjoying the readings from the book of the man who cared for the dead, Tobit. And I'm sure that you are familiar with Pharisees and Sadducees and other religious sects in the Judaism of Jesus' time. The Sadducees were divided against the Pharisees on the issue of the resurrection of the dead. For them, there is no such thing as resurrection. Now they come to Jesus, whom they know sides with their opponents on this matter, and they put him in a fix. They describe to him a case similar to that of Sarah in the first reading. The woman attempts seven marriages, all in vain. The husbands die before she gets to know them, that is, before the marriage is consummated. According to the law of Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, if a man dies leaving no child, his brother must marry the widow and raise for him descendants. So they ask him, Master, if it is true that there is the resurrection of the dead, what will be the fate of this woman, of the seven, whose wife will she be, since all of them got married to her? What would you answer if you were Jesus? Would you say they become co-husbands or part-timers or corporate owners? But Jesus quickly comes out of this trap. However, he approaches the question of his interrogators from another plane. He describes the resurrection from another perspective. The resurrected bodies will be like those of angels. Yes, although we shall retain our masculinity, our femininity, our bodies will serve another purpose other than procreation. God will be the sole object of our desire, of our love. This is what is called the beatific vision. What about our husbands, our children, our loved ones? Shall we simply disregard them and live solitary lives? Not at all. We shall love them even more because God will be all in all. Indeed, it will be a communitarian life, but centered on God. I am calling it a life, not death, because he is God of the living, not of the dead. When Jesus appends this to the burning bush text from Exodus in his answer to the Sadducees, I think he resonates something in the ears of his audience. The patriarchs he's quoting, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we are long dead, but he considers them living. He is a God of the living, not of the dead. And I think Jesus' answer to the Sadducees was on point. I'm sure that at the end of his explanation, the Sadducees got to know that, first of all, the resurrection is real, and secondly, the resurrected bodies exist at a higher level of being. In the creed, we profess faith in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, for the past 50 or so days, we have been meditating on the resurrection of our Lord. As St. Paul tells us, Christ is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. We are destined to be where Christ is. This, however, is not guaranteed. We need to remain vigilant as we await for his return. We have to live well, taking care especially what we do with our bodies. This same body will rise to new life, a blessed life in the presence of the living God with all the saints. May we never doubt the Lord is promises, for this is the reason he came to be like one of us, so that we may become like him, 
divine. May we live our lives every day with this in mind, knowing that after our earthly tent is shattered, as we often read during the funeral liturgies, God has prepared for us another dwelling. Hello, OLPH. My name is Mary Lynn Januszewski, and I'm the Director of Finance and Operations at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish in Glenview, Illinois. And this message comes to you with heartfelt gratitude and thanks for your ongoing generosity and support of OLPH Parish. This overwhelming generosity allows us to continue to serve and to minister to the parish community in so many different ways. So thank you, OLPH, for all you do. You are much appreciated. 